Hey, this is Arthur Hill, Chief Technical Strategist at TrendInvestorPro.com. Thank you very much for tuning in to our YouTube channel and watching this video. If you like this video, be sure and give us a thumbs up. So before we hit the charts and show you how to quantify retracements, just want to show you a little bit from the weekend commentary here at TrendInvestorPro.com. We've got a lot to offer at a very reasonable monthly fee, you can see there. And on the main analysis page, there's a combination of premium and free articles. And what I'm talking about today will be posted uh, as a free article um, after this. First, I'm going to show you what was posted on Saturday. We have a weekend video that was 41 minutes long covering the broader market environment, the changes we had this past week, what to look forward to next week, and the 60 ETFs in our core chart list. And you can see the annotated chart book there and the ranking tables. And what I want to point out is, I'm scrolling down through this commentary, we had the high-low lines turning down for the first time since early September. Two of the three, actually three of the three, turned down last week. So that's, of course, a negative signal because we got a big expansion of new lows last week. There you can see SPY breaking the 40-week moving average. But as you can see, this is the 40-week EMA crosses, and you get clusters uh, usually when these crosses. It's usually not a clean break. So I covered that a little bit. And then I covered just how oversold is the S&P 500. And I looked at the percentage of stocks above the 50-day EMA. And that number moved to 3.6%, below 5%. And you can see over the last 20 years, there have been just a handful of readings. I didn't count uh, double dips, which we had. We had three of them, and we had a cluster in 2008. And then I looked at 14-day RSI because it moved below 20 and you can see that doesn't happen very often either. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven times RSI 14 has moved below 20. Uh, that's not very much. Even during the financial crisis, it didn't move below 20 in the 2008 bear market. You had a couple dips in 2001 and 2002, almost in 2000. Uh, but the point was, usually these dips gave way to a bounce. And then I was looking at stocks that were holding up or ETFs that were holding up very well using a scatter plot. And I isolated these four and I covered them in charts further down in the commentary. All right, so now let's look at a method to quantify the depth of the decline relative to the advance from October to February. And I'm using that advance because SBY is my benchmark. And there you can see that low on October 2nd, and then you have the high on the 19th of February, and then this really sharp decline. And of course, we can put Fibonacci retracements on there, and we can estimate the decline, how much it retraced of the prior advance. So the Fibonacci retracements, the red lines go from this October low to this February high. And you can see you overshot the 61.8% retracement did not offer any support at all. And you can see overshot the 38%, the 50%, close to a 100% retracement with that low on Friday, the intraday low. And then you closed here at 296.26. So what we can see here is that we can guesstimate that the retracement is between, well, we know it's between 61.8% and 100%. But how much is it exactly? Well, we can guesstimate, yeah, it's 80, 81% uh, because that's between 61.8 and 100%. Uh, but it'd be nice if we could actually quantify that retracement amount. And if we can do that, then we can isolate stocks and ETFs that held up better uh, based on that retracement amount. So if a stock or an ETF retraced 50%, or even 61.8%, it held up a lot better than the S&P 500 SBDR, SBY, which is the benchmark, because it got down to this 80% area. Now, we can't use Fibonacci retracements to 
quantify this, and we certainly can't put a scan together based on Fibonacci retracements, but there is an indicator that we can use to quantify these retracements. Let's take a look. So this is Williams percent R on the indicator window there below, and I'm calculating it on a 102-day period, and that's because if you go from this low uh, point here, that's one bar on October 2nd, which is the low, and you can see here it's 102 bars. And tomorrow it could add one more, 103, but right now this is 102 day range that I'm looking at. So what does Williams percent R actually tell us? Well, first of all, you look at the high-low range. And so you have a high of 339.08, and you have a low of 284.82. And so that range is 54.26. And we want to know what is the level of this close in that range, okay? How does it fit within that range? So what we do is we take the high and we subtract it from the close, and that gives us the current position. So there's 339 minus 296 equals 4282. That's the current position. And then we divide that current position by the range, and that gives us 78.42. And that tells us that the exact retracement from that October low to that February high is 78.92%, and lo and behold, there is the number there for Williams percent R, minus 78.92. Now, Larry Williams took the uh, number there, and he multiplied by minus 100, to, and that's why it ranges from 0 to minus 100. But when you have this indicator, that means you can put it in a scan, and you can look for stocks and ETFs that have numbers, say, around minus 60%, which means they would have retraced around 61.8% and held up much better than SPY. And those are the names we would be interested in, ones that held up better on this decline. So I was looking through the 11 sector SPDRs, and one sector stands out. XLK, the technology SPDR. We'll look at a candle glance group next. Uh, but right now, you can see here on this daily chart, there we're going from the October low to the February high. I put on the Fibonacci retracements for reference, and there you can see we're above the 61.8% retracement. That's the close on Thursday. That's the close on Friday. So we know that our retracement is less than 61.8%. But how do we quantify it? Well, we got Williams percent R there, and it tells us that it's 56.78%. And that is much higher than the retracement that we saw for SPY, whereas SPY got down into this area here, basically, on the retracement and almost to 100% on the low. XLK didn't even come close. It's got basically two big steps forward and one sharp decline backward. But the main point is it's holding up relatively well. And those are the names I want to be focused on, ones that held up relatively well on the pullback. And you can also see that XLK is also the only sector to close above its 200-day SMA. And note that all my charts use unadjusted data. I put a little underscore before the symbol because I'm not interested in seeing the dividend adjustments on the charts. So I created a candle glance group of the 11 sector SBDRs and SPY and put Williams percent R for 102 days. And there you can see SPY, which is our benchmark, minus 78.92. And then you can see XLY below minus 80. XLF below minus 80. Uh, there's XLK held, holding up the best, minus 56. XLC doing better, minus 70. XLI below minus 80. XLB below minus 80. XLE minus 90. XLV holding up better, minus 70. XLP not very good, minus 78. XLU below minus 80. 
and XLRE below minus 80. So there are only one sector that really stands out, XLK, and then the other two that stand out would be XLC and XLV. Thank you very much for tuning in to this video on our YouTube channel. If you want to know more about TrendInvestorPro.com, go to the website. There's free and premium content available. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. Thanks for tuning in and have a great day.